South Asia is fast becoming the next COVID-19 epicenter. The region has seen more than 1.35 million cases. That's more than 10 percent of the global total. India, Pakistan and Bangladesh have also recorded over 31,000 deaths, though experts suspect that the actual number might even be higher. For more on this story, we're joined now by John Fleming. He's the Asia-Pacific Head of Health for the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Good to speak with you this evening. The statistics that show the rate of infection, the rate of spread of this virus, they're alarming. Why has the caseload in South Asia jumped so massively in recent weeks? Well, I guess what you're looking at here in the context of South Asia and elsewhere is large populations, uh, large urban populations. Uh, we're also uh, entering the monsoon season in many of these countries and uh, also the, um, the cyclone season. So it's a mix of factors, but most certainly what we are attempting as uh, Red Cross, Red Crescent uh, societies, as the International Federation, is to shine a light on the fact that although the focus justifiably is elsewhere in the world, particularly having uh, uh, massive outbreaks in Europe and now in Latin America, it's really important to recognize that uh, Asia and particularly South Asia is extremely important and, uh, and we really need to be focusing attention on the countries you've mentioned. On its part, India actually imposed a lockdown fairly early into the pandemic on the 24th of March, but that hasn't seemed to help. But what went wrong? Well, I don't know if we could say what went wrong. Clearly, many countries uh, have had similar scenarios whereby uh, quarantining or lockdown, as you say, we've had uh, spikes uh, elsewhere in, uh, in Asia Pacific and elsewhere in the world. So I'm not sure if it would be correct to analyze it as what went wrong. Clearly, it's multidimensional in terms of the challenges that countries such as India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, that you've also mentioned. And we're also seeing countries such as Japan and indeed uh, um, uh, Australia, who are also having spikes uh, within the context uh, of coming out of quarantine in our lockdown. Mr. Fleming, talk to us then about the dimension, the dynamics of, of the challenges that you referenced to just now to, to, for South Asian countries. What are they facing in terms of, of really stemming this outbreak? What clearly the main factor is uh, community engagement, getting messaging out, uh, dealing with rumors that may be challenging for people to understand the uh, the the absolute importance, for instance, of wearing masks, of wearing, uh, of social distancing. So one of the biggest challenges uh, we have in South Asia and indeed elsewhere throughout the world is the consistent messaging around protection, around hand washing, around wearing of masks, around social distancing. And as I referenced earlier, in countries that have large populations, large urban populations, uh, social distancing is clearly extremely uh, difficult in, in many of these contexts. So it's, a, it's about prevention, it's about getting key messages, and it's about dealing with rumours and uh, allaying people's fears and getting the correct information. Uh, of course, there's many other aspects as well, but that would be one of the main uh, areas that Red Cross, Red Crescent can be involved and are involved in through our volunteer network and working at the grassroots level with communities. Yeah, if you could just uh, elaborate a bit further into what IFRC, what offer or what service they're extending at the moment to help. Thank you. Yeah, um, typically uh, the Red Cross, the uh, IFRC, we're, we've got 192 national societies, national Red Cross, Red Crescent Society. So our approach towards uh, this particular operation is around naturally health and, uh, and water and sanitation. So within the health program, it varies from country to country, but it's epidemic control. It's getting messages out, like I indicated earlier. It's supporting surveillance, contact tracing. Many national societies have involved themselves in clinical services, for instance, uh, setting up hospitals or supporting existing clinical services through 
the procurement and distribution of uh, PPE, personal protective equipment. Also, many national societies have ambulances so they can assist in patient transportation. And for instance, in India um, and elsewhere, I'm currently in the Philippines, where the Philippine Red Cross is 81 blood banks. So this is a massive contribution as well. But really, as I mentioned earlier, the, the Red Cross Red Crescent societies play an auxiliary role to the ministries of health, but we've also got the ability to go the last mile. So we're working in communities and uh, through our volunteers and also well-organized national societies who are trained and um, are, are competent in this type of emergency. But having said that, this is unprecedented from a Red Cross perspective, and indeed from a world perspective. Yeah, President, it is the word we hear most often with regards to COVID-19. Thank you so much for your thoughts uh, this evening. John Fleming from the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies.